legs and they're tucked in under the rig. I keep both of these boats inside of the channel, the rig's in between us. Okay. And and that's how we'll be able to, to make uh, our progress or, or make uh, monitor our progress and our timing and so forth and also the position of everybody uh, that's involved. And pass through the narrowest parts of the channel with residential areas on, 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 the, on the side of the channel. And after we pass that uh, narrow spot, uh, then the, there's another couple of miles that we'll be traversing until we get to uh, Keywood Offshore Services where we'll be slowing everything down, repositioning tugs, getting additional tug assistance that can fit in the narrow spots around the rig to maintain full control of the unit as we're transferring it, floating it onto the vessel. The Osprey is already sunk down to its operating uh, level, ready to receive the, the Louisiana. and. Uh, and uh, we just need to get her there safely, put her on the ship, and then, then they can commence de-ballasting the ship to bring it back out of the water, the entire, the entire unit. Uh, once we get a little bit closer, we'll be releasing these tow cables and, uh, and getting the smaller tugs that are even more maneuverable than these uh, so they can fit under the tight clearances underneath the lifeboats, the handrails, the anchors on, on this unit to ensure that we don't damage any, any equipment. the uh, ship and now the tugs are all stopped they're just going to be there to slow down the motion on towards the ship you can see just barely the tips of the towers that were on the ship on the main deck of the ship yesterday that's how far down that ship has gone 
into the water. And now the, uh, the last step that's left is to slowly bring that rig in up against those pylons to put her into position. That's, that's what's going on right now. Being a bit stubborn, but uh, back to the trying to see where the back to the bow or back on the realization of the tugs is. Uh, wait. If she can spin around. The problem is that the locations where you can apply power to it are uh, are limited. See, she's uh, she's just being a bit of a bear right now. But they've got her they've got her spinning in the right direction now. Inherently our our it, it's not a natural move. These these structures aren't meant to be moved around in such tight quarters. So there's a lot of planning, but there's also a lot of reacting. If uh, if something goes go according to plan, you have to be able to improvise adapt to the situation and, and try and overcome it and that's that's what we did we uh, we had to uh, we saw that plan A wasn't working we went to plan B uh, that worked for a little bit and then it stopped working so we had to continue going to different alternatives there's not just one set point where you can push and pull on this thing and depending on the environment and everything you just have to be able to overcome uh, the situations to, to make it a successful maneuver and, uh, that's where the the proper equipment comes into place and the flexibility of these highly maneuverable tugboats and, and efficient crews uh, going, getting in there at a moment's notice and, uh, and essentially they, they, they saved the day. So we're able to, uh, to get the rig under control and now we're making a nice approach to the, uh, to the ship. The rig has uh, gone to uh, her secured spot on board the Osprey and uh, mission accomplished nothing was uh, nothing was uh, no paint was scratched we got there safely and uh, now we'll go for the final part of this where they will deballast the ship get back to a sailing draft they'll secure the rig to the ship and put the sea fastenings on and uh, probably in a day or so we'll proceed outbound to sea okay. almost up to 90. Okay, head towards that plane boat up there. Going to the Osprey.